Yo, what up? It's your boy Chris. Today, uh, let me move this down. Today we are finally doing it. Oh, whoa, that, whoa, <laughs> whoa, buddy, whoa, what are you doing, buddy? Today, I'm so excited. We are actually going ahead with a bioactive terrarium, viver vivarium, don't worry, she made it. Bro, you are just excited AF as well, aren't you? For Rapashi, it's been pretty much a year. I think it's been her one year uh, birthday, so I think she's two now, and dude, you are a it's been way too long. I waited way too long gathering funds, doing research, because ter terrestrial plants are, are freaking hard. <laughs> There's so many tropical terrestrial plants and they all have different care levels and some of them aren't gecko safe anyways. Please, if you are thinking about this, definitely do it. Your crested gecko is worth all the effort, worth all the heartache that your wallet is going to experience. Bioactive terrarium is every Crested Gecko Owner's Dream. And today we are going to realize that dream, check that off our to-do list. Let's get it, let's go. Big, big jump, biggest jump with Hachi. let's go, biggest jump. Oh, that, do you see how far that was? What? Okay, but for now she's going back to her usual tank. <laughs> All right, first things first, we need a tank and the dimensions of the tank are here. And this tank comes out to just shy of 25 gallons. Um, I recommend at least a 20 gallon for a crested gecko because even though they look like they're not doing much in the day, they're actually very, very active at night. And for an adult crested gecko, you need at least 20 gallons for them to move around. And these are the egg tarts that I'll be finishing off later. Next, we got our lava rock. I just got lava rocks for grills because they're basically the same thing. You're gonna want to really rinse this before putting this into your enclosure, but this is going to provide us with our drainage layer. And we also got this mesh. This is way more than we need, like way, way more than we need. Synthetic burlap. And this is going to be what we place on top of this so that we keep the soil and this separate to keep our drainage layer an actual drainage layer and not just a mixture of lava rock and soil. So that's gonna act as a separator. Now pro tip, there are lava rocks at your local fish stores or your pet store and there's mesh as well, but they cost at least double um, and for the same amount or even less of an amount. So the pro tip here is because the fish tank hobby or the reptile and amphibian and pet hobby is more niche, there's gonna be less competition. So they're basically, and this works with timers as well and also temperature, like thermostats and all that jazz, even power plugs or sprayers and misters. They basically just take those products and then slap on a pet logo and it doubles the price. So if you can get some equivalent product at your local home and garden center or some electronics place, you're gonna find it for much cheaper and I can use this for a very long time for a lot of other projects. After the drainage layer, we have our golf green organic compost with warm castings and, and with peat moss. So I'm gonna try this out, never tried it before. We're gonna combine it with some plantation soil. So it has cocoa fiber. That's good for our uh, bioactive little critters. And then we have forest moth. We'll throw some of this in and around as well. Now this looks like a big mess. I got my vacuums trapped in here as well, but these are some wood pieces that I've been saving up for this occasion for some time now. And they're just deciduous tree branches. And I think there's some opani wood down here. And of course the plants. Now we have this, let's start here. We have a earth star cryptan cryptanthus, and this is part of the bromeliad family. Really popular plant in this hobby. We have a maidenhair var fritz luthi, and we have good old pothos. We got two pots of good old pothos, and hopefully they're gonna grow in and climb everywhere, make it look nice. And I grabbed two more plants today. Um, this one is also a bromeliad. I'm not sure which one is called. It might be a Guzmanii. Um, yeah, not sure. And I've also gotten a Dracaena. Now all these plants are quite cheap. I got it just from home and garden centers. So I didn't even need to go to a specific uh, place that sells tropical plants. But the main part is we got to uh, get rid of all the soil, clean the roots real well, and also clean or uh, rinse off anything that could be on these leaves very well. So we gotta make sure to do that because we have a pretty sensitive gecko going in. 
And we have grape seed oil as well. We're now gonna use that for today. On top of all that, we have some leaf litter. This is just leaf litter I found in my backyard. And you gotta make sure that you put this in the oven at 300, around 300 Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes, just to make sure they're very well cooked and really adds that umami flavor for your isopods. And speaking of isopods, we have the dairy cow. These are really cute. Let me try to open these. Wow, look how cute they are. They really do kind of look like dairy cows. This guy is just hiding his face. These guys are so cute. I can't wait until they breed and make a big family of dairy cows and make me some milk too, but I'm lactose intolerant. And then we have a springtail culture. Springtails are just basically your decomposers. I think even arguably even more hardworking than the isopods. They are just tireless little guys. And lastly, we just got this food and water dish and this is gonna attach to somewhere along the glass um, and you can tighten it. It's kind of like a suction cup that you can tighten. I'm not sure how it's gonna work yet. I haven't tried it before, but I found it pretty neat and very, just a good idea. This is, these are attachable. And so you don't need to take out the whole thing every time you wanna add some more food or add some more water. You just take out this plastic part. Oh, also almost forgot, we got lights, the LED lights. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna couple this with some other random LEDs from a fish tank lid that I have lying around. I'm making the moss right now and it smells really good. <laughs> smells like the forest and it's, it just smells like you're in nature. Basically, you just pour some dechlorinated water into here and it will take some time to absorb all of it. As you can see, they were just two rectangular bricks and now they're pretty much more so the moss that we're more familiar with. So you wanna be pretty careful with these roots. Just take them out like so. And then get all the dirt off. You don't want to wet them yet at this point because it's easier to get the dirt off if it's dry. And then you want to do the finishing touches with a hose. You want to switch to a gentler mist and, and take it easy. You want to blast the crap out of them. Oh, like that. <laughs> oh no. First of all, before anything, we're going to turn it on its side so that the backdrop is on the bottom. And then we're going to moss this whole thing up. Okay, here's what it looks like right now. I just flipped it back on its side. The reason why I didn't moss up the lower half is because it's gonna be covered up. I also don't want too much moisture for some of these plants. Okay, we're ready to start our drainage layer. We got some good old lava rocks. Now these guys are not just for show. The drainage layer also provides beneficial bacteria, just like in a fish tank. That's actually pretty cool. It's more up my alley. Our barbecue is ready. One crusted gecko coming right up. And here we've placed the burlap, which is going to separate the drainage layer and the soil. It doesn't really matter if it's imperfect. It's gonna be covered anyway, and it's not going to be the highlight. And it's okay to have extra. I actually don't mind if it's double layered. It just really keeps the dirt away from the drainage layer and keeps the water flowing through. Whoa, there are actually earthworms in this mix. That is awesome. I thought it was just earthworm castings, but I, I guess, there are some earthworms mixed into this as well. That's cool. So earthworms are also one of the bioactive little critters that you can use. Didn't plan on adding any earthworms, but here we are. Woohoo, the pothos are in, nice. They're gonna provide some shade for some plants that are not very direct sunlight friendly. I like the look. I hope they spread upwards and cover the canopy as well.
where if Rapashi ends up eating these guys, I'm going to be so mad. I'm gonna eat Rapashi. I'm just kidding. Rapashi doesn't have too much meat on her body. It's so cool to see them discovering their new world. I haven't even put the main star of the show in here yet. And I'm already just excited with these guys alone. All right, now the final touch is to add our leaf litter. Yum. This stuff makes it really comfortable for the isopods and for the springtails as they break down and provide shelter and food at the same time. Here is the moment of truth. Hi, Rapashi. She's like, whoa, what's going on? Wait, what? No. <laughs> Rapashi. Other way, bro. Other way. We're kind of anticlimactic. Now you see it. Now she sees it. Now she's like, oh, shoot. What is this place? Huh? Never seen these before. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> if she goes straight out of here, I'm going to be so pissed. She's thinking about it. <laughs> no, Rapachi, this is your first time in a bioactive enclosure. Come on, man. You good, bro? Can I change scratch? I think maybe she's shocked. She's like, is this really my new home? Maybe she's never felt the touch of real plant. And now she's just over the moon. Bro, are you good, fam? She doesn't even realize. Oh, maybe she does. Oh, and there you go. Ah, oh, she's trampling the maiden hair fern. And of course she just ignores everything and would rather hang on the glass. I've made all this and her favorite place is there. Okay, the first real introduction into our tank. Ah, uh, yes. That's more like it. Welcome to your new home. you enjoyed this video please give it a like and subscribe there'll be more videos to come and don't forget to get your hands wet